Let's try to evaluate the series from weekly math challenge 33, summation from k equals 1 to infinity of arc tangent of negative 2 over k squared. And I want to recognize Rohan Shind for being the very first person to correctly answer this question with the answer of negative 3 pi over 4. Let's endeavor to obtain the same answer. So to begin with, since we have the summation that looks pretty hard to evaluate, you may think that really one sensible way that we may approach this question is by attempting to make the sum telescope. Telescope. And you may know how telescoping sums work, you may not. So let me give you a quick example. For example, summation like this is going to telescope. If you have n plus no, not plus, n minus n plus 1, and you're summing it up from, let's say, n equals to 1 to, let's say, 10, then you're going to have, when n is equal to 1, 1 minus 2, and when n is equal to 2, we're going to have 2 minus 3, just plugging 2 into n, and when n is equal to 3, we're going to get 3 minus 4, all the way to when n is equal to 10, and we get 10 minus 9. And we quickly see that all the intermediate values are cancelling out. This minus 2 and plus 2 cancel out, minus 3 and plus 3 cancel out, minus 4 and plus 5 cancel out, all the way to plus 9 and minus 9 cancelling out. You, do, you can't see plus 9, but it's right there, plus 9 minus 8. And all that's left is going to be 1 minus 10 or negative 9. And this thing is called... And the sums like this is called the telescoping sum, where all the intermediate values are cancelling out. And since we know in trigonometry there are lots of summation and difference identities, we may think that if we can somehow convert this expression to an expression similar to n minus n plus 1, or who knows, arc tangent of n, minus arc tangent of n plus 1 using some trig identity, we may be able to make the sum telescope, cancel out the intermediate values, and see what's left. And that's going to help us greatly if we can somehow find, these, somehow find the representation that's going to allow the series to, series to telescope. That's always the hardest part, trying to make the summation telescope. So let's try it out. To begin with, obviously we want the summation to be to be something like this, where we have some n value and n plus 1 value, or n minus 1 and n, or n minus 1 and n plus 1, and we have this minus sign in between, so when we sum them up, things are going to cancel out. So you may think of representing arc tangent of negative 2 over k squared as summation of two arc tangent. So we want to develop a formula for arc tangent so we want to know if it's possible to find arc tangent of x plus arc tangent of y such that we are going to get arc tangent such that we're going to get arc tangent arc tangent of negative 2 over k squared of negative 2 over k squared and of course to make the to make the summation telescope you want x and y to be in the form k k plus 1 k minus 1 or k plus 2 or some values of k that are reasonably close so we can see the cancellation. So to begin with, let's start by deriving the summation identity for arc tangent of x plus arc tangent of y. You may have this memorized but the derivation is not too bad so I will prove it to you pretty quickly. And you may remember from your trick class that tangent of alpha plus beta is equal to, is equal to, in fact, let's look at tangent of alpha minus beta, minus beta, and I should have mentioned, instead of doing arc tangent of x plus arc tangent of y, let's look at the representation arc tangent of x minus arc tangent of y, so the series telescopes like n minus n plus 1, so that should be minus. So let's try to find a representation for tangent of alpha minus beta, and we're going to use this representation to convert it to representation for arc tangent. And you may remember from your trigonometry class or pre-calculus class that tangent of alpha minus beta is equal to tangent of alpha minus tangent of beta over 1 plus tangent alpha tangent beta. And from this, we can simply take arc tangent of both sides, arc tangent of both sides, 
and we get arc tangent and tangent are going to cancel out. You have to be careful with the correction factor because arc tangent and tangent in a row, when you have arc tangent before tangent, is not necessarily going to cancel out. You have to add plus or minus pi k to make sure you're looking at the same value. But I will discuss that. But let's say arc tangent and tangent cancel out and we have alpha minus beta is equal to arc tangent of tangent of alpha minus tangent beta over 1 plus tangent alpha tangent beta. And you may remember that arc tangent is only going to output the values between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 exclusive. So arc tangent of this value or arc tangent of any value, so any arc tangent is defined to output the values between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And this can be a problem because alpha minus beta may be, who knows, 3 pi over 2, a value that's greater than pi over 2 or less than negative pi over 2. So we have to make sure we put the correction factor plus pi k where k is some integer. So the reason we have to add pi k is because you may remember tangent of some, some angle and tangent of that angle plus pi plus pi or that angle plus 2 pi or 3 pi or 4 pi is always going to be the same. And easy way of thinking about this, you probably already know about this, but tangent of beta can be thought of as slope of the line with the inclination data. And the easy way of proving this is that if we have a circle and that's the angle, we know, we know from tree class that this change in y is going to be sine of beta and this change in x is going to be cosine of beta in the unit circle. So this slope, which is change in y over change in x, is going to be sine of beta over cosine of beta, which is tangent of beta. So since this line, this line, and when we add pi to the line, has the same slope, we know, we know, we know tangent of some angle is equal to tangent of that angle plus pi, or the tangent of that angle plus 2 pi, or in fact plus any pi k. So when we take this arc tangent, when we take this arc tangent and we get alpha minus beta has arc tangent of this, we know alpha minus beta is going to have the same tangent value as arc tangent, but that's not necessarily telling us which alpha minus beta we're talking about because this side of the equation is going to output the values between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So just in case alpha minus beta is larger than pi over 2 or smaller than negative pi over 2, for example, 3 pi over 2, we have to make sure we put in the correction plus pi k to account for that. So in our case, as we are about to see, the correction is going to be, in fact, 0. We have to add simply add 0k, as we are about to see for our particular case. In general case, you have to decide how many pi k's you have to add. Anyway, I, I digress just a bit, but I hope the, this, this discussion has helped a lot of you. And now let's look at what we have to do. We want to find the expression for arc tangent of x minus arc tangent of y. So let's let alpha be arc tangent of x and beta be arc tangent of beta, arc tangent of y. So x is equal to tangent of alpha and y is equal to tangent of beta, just reversing this. So knowing this, we have the expression, we have arc tangent of x minus arc tangent of y as we want is equal to, is equal to arc tangent, is equal to arc tangent of tangent of alpha minus tangent of beta. Well, x is tangent alpha and y is tangent beta. So we have x minus y over 1 plus xy. And of course, we have to eventually think about what to precisely add, what correction factor we have to add to this to make our expression work out. Now, we know that x and y has to be in the form n minus 1, n, n plus 1, or some combination, or maybe n plus 2 or n minus 2. So, keeping this in mind, what value does our x and y have to be for this thing to evaluate to be negative 2 over k squared? Well, so we want x minus y to be negative 2, so x minus y to be negative 2, and 1 plus xy to be k squared and 1 plus xy to be k squared. 
And we know our x and y are going to come from values like n minus 1, n, and n plus 1. With some intuitive guesswork, it's easy to see that n equals to n minus 1, and y equals to n plus 1 is going to satisfy the first equality, and also the second equality, because n minus 1 times n plus 1 is going to be n squared minus 1, and n squared minus 1 and plus 1 are going to cancel out to give us n squared, or in our case, k squared. So instead of n minus 1 and n plus 1, let's use the same letter. Let's do k minus 1 and k plus 1 as x and y. So we have found x and y. So what I'm saying is that arc tangent of negative 2 over k squared is equal to arc tangent of this thing, or arc tangent of x plus y. So we are saying arc tangent of x minus y is this thing. So we are saying that this entire thing is equal to arc tangent of x minus arc tangent of y, which is equal to arc tangent of x, which is k minus 1, and arc tangent of y is k plus 1. Arc tangent of k plus 1. And of course, we may have to add or subtract pi k. Now to see how many pi k's we have to add, let's think about this. We are summing this up from k equals to 1 to infinity. So we are summing this up from k equals 1 to infinity. So we know we are going to have expressions such as arc tangent. When k is equal to 1, we have arc tangent of 0 minus arc tangent of 2 when k is 1. And when k is 2, we are going to have arc tangent of 1 minus arc tangent of 3. And when k is 3, we're going to have arc tangent of 2 minus arc tangent of 4, and so on. And we are about to see that this thing is in fact in between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, so this correction factor is not going to apply. What do I mean by that? Well, we know this left side of this equation is in between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 pi over 2 because it's arc sine of some expression. And I'm going to show you that this part is in fact also between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So we can ignore this plus pi k. This thing can go away. So let me show you why. So we have arc, arc tangent of 0 minus arc tangent of 2. Let's visualize what that means. Well, we have angle angle whose tangent is 0, so that's this angle, and we have angle whose tangent is 2, and that's going to be angle with slope of 2, with the line with the slope of 2. Remember that tangent means the slope, so we have slope of 2. So when we subtract, our value is going to be negative of this angle, so that's going to be our first angle. And for the second expression, arc tangent of 1 minus arc tangent of 3, we have angle we have angle whose tangent is 1 or slope is 1, and we have angle whose tangent is 3. And that's going to be our angle once again. And it's pretty easy to see. For the next one, we have angle whose tangent is 2 and angle whose tangent is 4. So angle whose tangent is 2 and angle whose tangent is 4, so pretty high slope once again. And it's pretty easy to see that this difference, the difference between the two angles, which is what we are evaluating each time, is going to be between. This thing is going to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. In fact, it's going to be between negative pi over 2 and 0. And since this thing is already in between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, we don't have to have this correction factor. In fact, k is equal to 0. Now, if we had this expression coming out to be between pi over 2 and pi, in that case, we were going to have to put the correction factor negative pi. But in our case, we know this difference between the angles that we are successfully evaluating is always between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, so we should not have this correction factor. So we know this, these two things are equivalent. Now all we have to do is to evaluate the summation, and our summation was summation from k equals to 1 to infinity of arc tangent of negative 2 over k squared. So we're looking at, so we're looking at summation summation from, if my pen starts to work, summation from k equals to 1 to infinity of this telescoping expression. And we have some of it already written down, arc tangent of 0 minus arc tangent of 2, plus arc tangent of 1 minus arc tangent of 3, plus arc tangent of 2 minus arc tangent of 4, 
and really we can go on just a bit more. So plus arc tangent when k is 4, we're going to get 4 minus 1. So arc tangent of 3 minus arc tangent of 5. And when k is 5, we're going to have arc tangent of 4 minus arc tangent of 6. And let's see how the cancellations work. Well, the arc tangent of 2s are going to cancel out like this. So we're skipping one line and we're canceling out diagonally. And we know arc tangent of 3 and arc tangent of 3 are going to cancel out, and these two are going to cancel out as well. So we see that in the end, we are left with these two expressions, arc tangent of 0 and arc tangent of 1. And if we stop at k equals to 5, we are left with additionally these two expressions, minus arc tangent of 5 and minus arc tangent of 6. And we can continue this process until we stop at k equals to some value, let's say n. So if we stop at k equals to n, then we're going to have a bunch of other values. And when k is n minus 1, we should have arc tangent of n minus 2 minus arc tangent of n. And when k is n, we should have arc tangent of n minus 1 minus arc tangent of n plus 1. And following the pattern, we know all of these are going to cancel out, and we should have these two expressions and these two expressions left at the end. So our summation is basically going to be basically going to be arc tangent of 0 plus arc tangent of 1 minus arc tangent of n minus arc tangent of n plus 1 when we stop at k equals to n. So when we stop at k equals to n, that's what our expression is going to be. When we stop at k equals to 5, we have these two expressions and these two expressions. When we stop at k equals to some n, we have these two expressions and these two expressions as so similarly in the same way. But in our case, we are not stopping at n. We are stopping when n is infinitely large, when n is very, very large. So we want to evaluate arc tangent of n when n is approaching infinity. And we have another one, minus arc tangent of n plus 1 when n is approaching infinity, or n plus 1 is approaching infinity. Notice that n approaching infinity and n plus 1 approaching infinity are the same thing. And what is arc tangent as n approaches infinity? Well, if we look at our unit circle, we want our slope, we want our tangent, we want our slope of the line to approach infinity. And that's going to happen as our line is getting closer and closer to this 90 degree angle of pi over 2. So we know, we know we're looking at minus pi over 2 and another minus pi over 2 right here. And arc tangent of 0 is 0. And arc tangent of 1, line with slope of 1, is pi over 4. So plus pi over 4. So our final answer is pi over 4 minus pi or negative 3 pi over 4. So the answer to this summation is negative 3 pi over 4. Negative 3 pi over 4, and we are done.